Are you sure you want the same training that everyone else has? In a time when technology, culture, politics, and work are changing moment to moment, we need a certain kind of leader. Leaders of courage, certainty, confidence, decisiveness, influence, impact, and effectiveness. At Badass Agile, we've always been about creating elite leaders. We make heroes. A new spring cohort of The Forge is about to begin. Click the link in the show notes below to reserve your space and find out more. Did you know that there's a war out there online? That's this week on the Badass Agile Podcast. Greetings, team. Welcome to the Badass Agile Podcast. I'm your host, Chris Williams. I don't know what it is about 2023. Maybe there's a deep polarization that's getting ever wider. Maybe it's the geopolitical forces that are making people upset, impatient, and angry. But there just seems to be more and more confusion and division and straight up attacking out there online. You know them, the LinkedIn trolls, the so-called experts. Everyone's got an opinion and everyone's got a hate on for anyone whose opinion is different than their own. What's going on here and what should you do about it? Well, first, let's take a moment to remember why we're here. To create an elite tribe of leaders who truly serve their clients and communities by doing what matters and what works, relentlessly chasing value and excellence like a badass. There's so many resources out there about what you need to do to be agile, but we're focused on who you need to become in order to lead teams. So let's hammer down those fundamentals to create a truly unique and powerful force in this industry. And remember, friends, if this helps you, share this with your friends. As our market saturates, more and more scrum masters, more and more coaches, more and more adoption of agile itself The online war of information will confuse and dilute the strength of what you do. We tend to glorify our own importance. But the truth is that most people out there don't really care about Agile. It's us. Those of us who are involved in the conversation have magnified its importance somehow. And I think we're trying to do two things at once. We want to make our presence known. We want to increase our audience and our reach. But at the same time, We desperately seem to need to protect our turf, to defend our ideas and our own sense of rightness. If you're out there in the community as a practitioner, you probably like the feel of an echo chamber. Validation feels good. Other people who say the same things as you do because they believe what you believe. And I'm sure if you're contributing, If you're putting content out there, you probably want to hold on to your position, your mindset, your ideals and values, and show up as a trusted advisor or expert, someone that other people come to, listen to, read, and follow, which means you kind of want body count, don't you? We like the likes and the shares and the follows. But when you're chasing that, you open up your ideas for critical review, right? The more people who know about you, The more people who read your stuff, someone's going to stumble upon it and say, I think you're wrong or worse. So people start hammering on each other's opinions. They're not comfortable with letting others believe what they believe or do what they do and just let them be. It's not good enough. We got to spend all that time making ourselves right and making it known that we're right. All that effort and energy eventually results in dimming your light. Either you're spending precious time and energy defending your position and recruiting others to support it, or worse, you're backing off your red line. You're smoothing the sharp edges of the blade to avoid criticism and rejection. You stop saying things that might be controversial or counterculture. All of these things that you do so we can fit in and avoid rejection come with a cost of being ordinary. One of the best ways to avoid rejection is to take a variation on a popular theme, something that everyone agrees to, and simply expand it, sometimes writing it to the point of absurdity. See the Deloitte Agile version 3 subway map, for example. 
new submodels, new maps that either extend or layer on top of existing ideas, existing simple ideas, existing simple and effective ideas. This creates the illusion, the comfortable illusion, of being new yet familiar, which is where virality is supposed to come from. People like things that they already like, and the tiny twist of novelty makes it appetizing. But the problem is most of the information that comes out of that practice is boring, confusing, or downright impractical. So who should you listen to? I don't care who you choose. If you like me, great. But there are tons of fellow podcasters and YouTubers and people putting their opinions and their advice out there, and all of it is relatively good. I celebrate people who are trying to move the marker. But I recommend that you follow a few strong and dissenting voices that meet the following criteria. Number one, they got to be knowledgeable and experienced. If they haven't done Scrum for a little while, Agile, Kanban, Lean, whatever, if they haven't been in the business long enough, a lot of what they're saying is not steeped in experience, but in other people's opinions. That's a bad way to go. You want to listen to people who are not only experienced, but experienced in getting the kinds of results that you want to get. If you like hitting home runs for customers, you're going to follow a certain person, someone who's done that before. If you like Agile outside of tech, you're going to follow someone who does that, who has a track record, who has case studies and stories to tell. This brings me to my next point. I think that you should follow and listen to people who understand outcomes, whether that's the outcome of a creative endeavor, whether that's the outcome of a marketing endeavor or a product or a piece of software. An outcome to a business or to an owner or to an end user is the end game. That's the point of becoming agile. There's no value in agility outside of that. So look to people who understand that attribute and know how to apply agile to get those outcomes. It's sometimes helpful if they have a business background of some kind because at least they understand what those outcomes might be. And moreover, they understand how large enterprises are organized and operated, what they value, what they're measured on. Now, this one's not so essential, but I do think it's sometimes helpful to expose yourself to more and more resources who understand that basic information. Also, make sure that you follow voices who don't subscribe to any one particular way. There's lots of different ways to institute Scrum, Kanban, Agile principles themselves without needing things to be by the book all the time. Sometimes there are best practices. Sometimes there are rules of thumb, but it's a rare thing that any one way must be followed to the letter or it won't be effective. The universe just kind of tends to not work that way. And in fact, baked into the word agile is the assumption that this can be bendy and fluid. So let it be bendy and fluid and look for people who are bendy and fluid thinkers. I mean, it's called the scrum guide for a reason. It's just a guide. It's not the ultimate reference manual. Okay. Look for people who are seeking to simplify, not to create more and more process. I'm usually suspect of people who create more and more complexity, more and more process because they're trying to sell it to you. Now, listen, I'm an entrepreneur. I get the idea of selling things to you, but there's a belief that the more complex it is, the more worthy it is of a hefty price tag. There is no innate value in complexity related to that. And I say this one often, look for information that doesn't suppose that Agile solves all problems. It doesn't. It's not tailor-made for every kind of work. It's not tailor-made for every kind of problem domain. There are certain situations in which Agile doesn't work well, and in fact, Waterfall probably works a whole bunch better. What you want is someone who understands the fundamentals of agility, when they work, how they work, and why they work, and is able to select them and apply them in the right conditions. Those people will help you most as you grow in your Scrum, Kanban, or Agile career. And that brings me to my next point, which is listen to people who are trying to advance the craft. We've had Agile for you know almost a quarter century now. And at this point, we have to understand that the more specific it gets, the shorter its shelf life will be. At this point, we should be taking the best lessons, like we did from all of the things that came before Agile, selecting deploying and refining those best ideas to create something new, something that serves even better, something that readies us for the future. When Agile was conceived, and when the book on Scrum was written, 
We didn't have smartphones in the way that we have today. We didn't have AI in the way that we had today. Our spot on the exponential growth curve of technology was much less steep than it is in the here and now. We must ensure that we're advancing the craft so that it's adaptable to the future. Otherwise, you've signed up for a career that's likely to go extinct in the next three, five, or maximum 10 years. And finally, listen to and trust people who are trying to solve real problems, which are never simply agile problems. The real problems in this world are the ones that pop up in the newspaper, the ones that show up in the shareholder report, the problems that are causing all of this layoff and destruction and disagreement. Those are the real problems in our society that we ultimately want to solve with great products, great solutions, and great companies. People who have experience in doing exactly that are, in my book, the most interesting ones to study and follow. I hope you found this one useful. As always, you can find me at badassagile.com and on Instagram at badassagile. Don't forget to check into our communities. You can find the links down below. That's where all the good stuff happens. I look forward to seeing you next time. And until then, stay badass. Badass.